what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to bitcoin daily for another video today we are talking about taxes that's right cryptocurrency taxes we get a lot of questions about this so we finally were able to gather all the information uh and put it together to present it to you guys um we're gonna jump right in because man if you guys knew what i just went through trying to get cute with this video and uh instead it was spent six hours basically wasted and then decided to just come back to powerpoint so yeah man i'm trying to just get this done at this point um as a disclaimer guys this video is for informational purposes only and should not be construed as tax or investment advice please speak to your own tax expert cpa or tax attorney on how you should treat taxation of digital currencies all right just wanted to get that out the way now let's jump in um so cryptocurrency tax policies are confusing people around the world this guy breaks down specific crypto tax implications within the u.s but similar issues arise in many other countries cryptocurrencies like bitcoin have gained significant popularity over the past few years and into 2020 this rise is this rise in popularity is causing governments to pay closer attention to the asset. Recently, we've seen the IRS release new uh, cryptocurrency tax guidance and start sending out thousands of warning letters to non-compliant cryptocurrency investors. The question everyone is asking is, how is cryptocurrency handled for tax purposes? So you can see here the guidance that they released and the letters that they've been sending out to people. How is cryptocurrency taxed? According to the official IRS guidance, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies should be treated as property for tax purposes, not as currency. This is true for all cryptocurrencies such as Ethereum, Litecoin, XRP, etc. This means that uh, crypto must be treated like owning other forms of property such as stocks, gold, or real estate. Just like you would with trading stocks then, you are required to report your capital gains and losses from your cryptocurrency trades on your taxes. Failing to do so is considered tax fraud in the eyes of the IRS. So guys, make sure to report your taxes because it's not, like it says here, it is fraud in the eyes of the IRS if they find out that you did not report it. Um, and yeah, as is explained here, um, they're, they're forms of property just like stocks gold and real estate so uh, your tax through capital gains all right and here's the form where it says you know how's uh, virtual currency treated for federal tax purposes blah 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 you get the point um, so you're probably asking yourself now how do you calculate your crypto capital gains and capital losses um, Calculating capital gains and losses for your cryptocurrency trades is relatively straightforward and we will walk you through the process. However, before doing the calculations, you need to understand taxable events, which is what we're jumping into right here. Now, what is a taxable event? A taxable event is simply a specific action that triggers a tax reporting liability. In other words, whenever one of these taxable events happen, you trigger a capital gain or capital loss that needs to be reported on your tax return. It's as simple as that. The following have been taken from the official IRS guidance from 2014 as to what is considered a taxable event in the world of crypto. In any of these scenarios, if any of these scenarios apply to you, you have a tax reporting requirement. So guys, basically, if you guys fall under any of these, you have to file taxes. You have to report taxes on it. So if you are trading cryptocurrency to fiat currency like the US dollar, it is a taxable event. Trading cryptocurrency to cryptocurrency is a taxable event. You have to calculate the fair market value in USD at the time of the trade. Um, so if you're trading, you know, between the pairs, each trade is a taxable event. Um, using cryptocurrency for goods and services is a taxable taxable event. Again, you have to calculate the fair market value in USD at the time of the trade. Earning cryptocurrency as income is a taxable taxable event from mining or other forms of earned cryptocurrency. Now, what is not a taxable event? 
giving uh, cryptocurrency as a gift is not a taxable event. A transfer is not a taxable taxable event. You can transfer cryptocurrencies between exchanges wallets without realizing uh, capital gains and losses. And buying cryptocurrency with USD is not a taxable event. You don't realize gains until you trade, use, or sell your crypto. All right, so step one of determining your cost basis. Um, now that's clear what you must uh, report or when you must report your crypto transactions, it's important to understand the exact process behind doing so. The first step is to determine the cost basis of your holdings. Essentially, cost basis is how much money you put into purchasing your property. For crypto assets, it includes the purchase price plus all other costs associated with purchasing the cryptocurrency. Other costs typically include, include things like transaction fees and broker commissions from the exchanges you purchase crypto from. So to calculate your cost basis, you would do the following. Purchase price of crypto plus others, other fees divided by quantity of holding equals cost basis. For example, if you invested $500 in Litecoin back in November of 2017, that would have bought you about 5.1 Litecoin. Let's say you also paid Coinbase or Binance a 1.49% transaction fee on the purchase. Your cost basis would be calculated as such. $500 plus 1.49% times 500 divided by 5.1 equals $99.50 per Litecoin. All right. Um, the second step uh, in determining your capital gain or loss is to merely subtract your cost basis from the sell price of your cryptocurrency. Sell price is also often referred to as a fair market value. Um, the equation below shows how to arrive at your capital gain or loss. Fair market value minus cost basis equals capital gain divided by, or I mean, I'm sorry, equals capital gain or loss. I'm getting confused with all this math. <laughs> Um, as, an ex as an example, let's say you sold exactly one Litecoin a month later because the price had doubled to $200 per coin. This would be considered a taxable event, trading crypto to fiat currency. And you would calculate the gain as follows. 200 minus 99.50 equals 100.50 capital gain. $100.50 capital gain. $200 is a fair market value in US dollar at the time of the trade. $99.50 is your cost basis in the asset. You then owe a percentage of this $100.50 gain to the government on your taxes. All right, I hope that makes sense. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what if I lost money trading crypto? I know many people do. So if you incurred a capital loss rather than a gain on your cryptocurrency trading, you can actually save money on your taxes by filing those losses. Many investors even strategically sell crypto assets, which they have losses in to reduce their tax liability at the end of the year. This strategy is commonly referred to as ta uh, tax loss harvesting. All right. Uh, determining fair market value. The simple capital gains calculation gets more complicated when you consider a crypto to crypto trade scenario. Remember, this also triggers a taxable event. Let's look at another example to gain understanding of how fair market value ties in. Let's say you purchase $100 of Bitcoin, including transaction and brokerage fees. That $100 currently buys about 0.01 Bitcoin. Now, let's say two months later, you trade all of your 0.1 Bitcoin for 0.16 Ether. How would you calculate your capital gains for this coin to coin trade? It all depends on what the fair market value of Bitcoin was at the time of the trade. Let's say that at the time of the trade, 0.01 Bitcoin was worth $160. This would make the fair market value of 0.01 Bitcoin $160. You would then be able to calculate your capital gains based off this information. 160 minus 100 equals $60 capital gain. For that crypto to crypto trade, you would owe the government a percentage of your $60 gain. The challenge for traders. 
This calculation and concept of fair market value sparks a large variety of problems for crypto traders. Some, uh, some traders have been trading crypto for months, possibly years, and haven't been keeping track of the dollar value or fair market value of their crypto at the time they traded. It's also not easy to keep track of USD values for most trades as they are mostly quoted in other cryptocurrency values, not in USD. The fair market value information is needed for traders to accurately file their taxes and avoid problems with the IRS. Depending on the volume of trades they have carried out, calculating gains could become extremely tedious and potentially impossible to do by hand if you haven't uh, been keeping track of fair market value. Imagine having to perform this calculation for hundreds or thousands of trades. Because of this challenge, a lot of cryptocurrency users are turning to crypto tax software to automate the entire tax reporting process. So we'll talk about uh, crypto tax software in a, in a little bit. So the next question is, how do I actually file my crypto taxes? And to, to properly file and report your crypto transactions, you need the IRS form 8949 and 1040 Schedule D. And you can check it out right there on your right hand side while I sip some water. I'm sorry, my um, <clears throat> my face is kind of covering that tax form. <laughs> Let me see if I can move my face out the way. Nope, that's not it. I remove. I moved something completely different. Oh my goodness, not again! Hold on. <laughs> Gotta move my. All right, so this is just so you guys can see this. And now I'm gonna try to move it back and hopefully not fail miserably. Boom, we did it guys. Guys, guys, we did it. We did it. Hey, it's all good. We did it guys. All right, so um, list all cryptocurrency trades and sales onto form 8949, which is pictured to the side, not below, along with the date you acquired the crypto. The date sold or traded your, pro your, pro your proceeds which is a fair market value, your cost basis, and your gain or losses. Once you have each trade listed, total them up at the bottom and transfer this amount on amount to your 1040 Schedule D. Include both of these forms with your yearly tax return. So imagine having to do all of this by hand. No thanks. Um, short term versus long term capital gains. One thing that has yet to be touched on this actual rate of your capital gains tax on whoops let's start over <laughs> one thing that has yet to be touched on is the actual rate of your capital gains tax that is because this rate is dependent upon a number of factors the first factor is whether the capital gain will be considered a short-term or long-term gain the most common rate in the world of cryptocurrency is the short-term capital gain which occurs when you hold a cryptocurrency for less than a year and sell the cryptocurrency at more than your cost basis. Short-term uh, capital gain taxes are calculated at your marginal tax rate. Check out this table that depicts the different tax brackets that you may fall under. So it's all right here. To demonstrate how to navigate the marginal tax brackets, suppose you're a single filer. You made $85,025 during the tax year and you purchased Bitcoin six months ago for $5,000 including fees and commission. Yesterday you sold Bitcoin for $6,000, a gain of $1,000. The $1,000 raises your income to $86,025 for the year. Based on a marginal tax rate table, the first 500 of your gain is taxed at the 22% rate, generating $110 in taxes. So the 22% rate is right here, which is $40,125 to, let me see, or no, okay, so it's $40,000 until right under this 80. So, so you see how 22% starts at $40,125 if you're a single individual. And you can make up to $85,524 before your rate goes from 22% to 24%. So as you can see here, um, the first 500 
of your gain is taxed at 22% rate, right here. The remaining 500 is taxed at the 24% rate, right here, as it exceeds the $85,525 threshold. This generates 120 in taxes. In total, the $1,000 uh, capital gain would generate $230 in taxes for the year. This is the amount that you owe the government. All right, I hope that was simple enough. Um, just look at this chart here, and and then um, and the numbers. And depending if you're a single, if you're married, um, for heads of household, you know, it's different rates and different amounts. So check that out. Now, long-term capital gains. Now, this is taxed differently, and you could you guys will be able to see it right here. For all of the holders out there, and, or hodlers. If you held your cryptocurrency for a year or more, you qualify for a lower long-term gains rate. This table details the tax bracket for long-term capital gains. As you can see, the long-term rate is much lower and rewards investors if they hold continuously for over, for a year or more. <clears throat> so now, um, if you're single up to $40,000, well, under $40,000, you're at 0%. Um, at 40,000 and above, you're at 15%, and at uh, all the way up to 441,000. So it pays to hold. You guys, get, you guys got that? It literally pays to hodl. Um, all right, mining cryptocurrency. If you mine cryptocurrency, you will incur two separate taxable events. The first is as income from the USD value of the coins you mine. And the second is for the capital gain or loss you incur when you sell or trade your mined coins. You report this income differently depending on whether or not you mine the crypto as a hobby or as a business entity. Um, crypto loans, margin trading, and DeFi. Cryptocurrency lending platforms and other DeFi services have exploded in popularity with the crypto landscape. Receiving interest income from a crypto loan or similar service is treated as a form of taxable income, similar to mining or staking rewards. This type of income should be reported under the other income section of line 21 of schedule one. Additional income and adjustments to income as part of your income tax return. All right, why can't my cryptocurrency exchanges provide me with accurate tax report? That's what we're all asking, right? This is where the problem exists. Because users are constantly transferring crypto into and out of exchanges, the exchange has no way of knowing wh how, when, where, or at what cost basis you originally acquired your cryptocurrencies. It only sees that they appear in your account. The second you transfer crypto into or out of an exchange, that exchange loses the ability to give you an accurate report detailing the cost basis and fair market value of your cryptocurrencies both of which are mandatory components for tax reporting. Um, as you see here, Coinbase themselves explains to their users how their generated tax reports won't be accurate if any of the below scenarios took place. This affects over two thirds of Coinbase users, which amounts to millions of people. So just look at this heads up, our gain loss calculator won't be accurate if you have um, and I'll read it to you guys, bought or sold digital assets on another exchange, sent or received digital assets from a non-Coinbase wallet, sent or received digital assets from another exchange including Coinbase Pro, stored digital assets on an external storage device, participated in an ICO, or previously used a method other than first in, first out to determine your gains, losses on digital asset invest, uh, investments. So that's why it's impossible for the for the exchanges to be able to provide you with that information. Um, another side effect of the cryptocurrency tax problem is that cryptocurrency exchanges struggle to give accurate and useful 1099s to their users. 1099s of all types serve the same general purpose to provide information into the IRS about certain types of income from non-employment related sources. Many exchanges have decided to issue 1099K because the industry leader Coinbase issues this form to users who meet certain thresholds. Unfortunately, this form is completely useless for taxpayers who are trying to report their cryptocurrency gains and losses. Now that we've spoken about all the problems that there is with taxing and with tax, 
let's talk about the solutions and the different ways we can we can resolve this issue um, the solution to the cryptocurrency tax problem hinges on aggregating all of your cryptocurrency data making up your buys sells trades airdrops forks mine coins exchanges swaps and receive cryptocurrencies into one platform so that you can build out an accurate tax profile containing all necessary data once all of your transactional data is in one place then you can start the process of reporting each transaction and the associated gains and losses for tax purposes of course you can do this by hand but you can also use a crypto tax calculator or software solution to automate the entire process crypto tax software um, so I'm gonna introduce you guys to the crypto ta uh, tax software that I'm using personally um, so it's up to you guys if you want to use this one or if you want to do your own research and go and look for a different one that is all up to you guys I'm telling you which one I use and then you do with that what you like um, if you do decide to use this one I am putting a referral link in the description um, that you guys can use if you like um, you don't have to it's up to you but it does support the channel so if you do use it I would I appreciate it if not is not a big deal I still love you <laughs> Um, so, uh, crypto tax software, CryptoTrader.tax, is software built for cryptocurrency traders to solve the tax reporting problem. It allows cryptocurrency users to aggregate all of their historical trading data by integrating their exchanges and making it easy to bring everything into one platform. Once the historical data is in the system, the tax engine auto generates all of the necessary tax reports for cryptocurrency traders to file like the 8949 in addition to the do-it-yourself tool cryptotrader.tax also offers a complete tax professional software suite for tax pros and accountants with cryptocurrency clients so if you're a, a you know an accountant or some sort of tax pro you can also use this software for your clients um, today, thousands of crypto investors and tax professional professionals use CryptoTrader.tax to securely and automatically build out their required cryptocurrency tax reports. Users can take these generated reports to their own tax professionals or they can simply upload them into tax software like TurboTax. What about other countries? I'm sure a lot of you are wondering. Um, similar to the US, countries all over the world have started taking action and enforcing cryptocurrency capital gains and losses uh, taxes. Um, this trend will only increase as the asset continues to become more and more popular. While, uh, while the tax rules are very similar to the US, small differences do exist. For more detailed information, you can check out the complete guides for Canada, Australia and UK at CryptoTrader.tax, link in our district description. What happens if I don't pay my crypto taxes? I know a lot of you are asking that as well. This is something that I, I wondered as well. Um, a lot of traders are convinced that because of the anonymous decentralized nature of blockchain and crypto transactions, that there is no way for the government to see or know that they are making money trading, buying, selling cryptocurrencies. This is not true. While the IRS has been slow to, the, to this point when it comes to dealing with crypto taxes, they are ramping up. The IRS win against Coinbase, which required the popular exchange to turn over records for individuals who have $20,000 or more in any transaction, buy, sell, or receive, is the beginning. The blockchain is a distributed block public ledger, meaning anyone can view the ledger at any time. Figuring out an individual's activity on that ledger essentially comes down to associating a wallet address with a name. Choosing not to report your crypto transactions is a risky decision that exposes you to tax fraud to which the IRS can enforce a number of penalties including criminal prosecution, five years in prison along with a fine of up to $250,000. And here you see the IRS and the CPA and everybody breaking into your house with a gun. <laughs> Guys, that wraps it up man. Um, I hope you got the information you were looking for from this. Um, it took a little bit to put it together. Uh, it took six hours on 
another uh, editing on another software that I ended up just throwing away um, and then just coming back to a uh, sweet old PowerPoint which I am love dearly and I'm just comfortable with and that's pretty much it guys that's all I got for you today if you guys have any questions drop it below um, I should do a question of the day on this video I'm gonna be honest I have not wrote it um, so I will write it right here live with you guys so for the question of the day as you guys know every video we have a random question about something in the video the question will always be in a random area of the video find a question and find the answer in the video post your answer in the comments for a chance to win a free month's membership to our trading room winners will be picked randomly once the video receives over 30 likes good luck guys so for the question of the day um let's let's come up with it let's come up with it um let's see about something that we went over let's do um Uh, all right. So let's do how we're, so it's going to be, how, how do you determine your cost basis? How do, how do you calculate your cost basis? So basically what's the, uh, formula? How do you calculate cost basis? What is the formula? Boom. There you go, guys. That is the question of the day. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you guys as always. Sorry for the va late video today. Um, that's it, guys. I'm out. Peace and love. As always, guys, have a good one.